afternoon in Atlanta, but the skies are clearing and the hostilities are continuing. They're friendly hostilities, if you will, as the Braves and Nationals fighting for the top of the division meet in game two of our four game set. We're live from SunTrust Park for the Braves and the Nationals. Hi again, friends. Chip Carey, Jeff Rancourt, Joe Simpson. Game two features a terrific pitching match of two guys having very similar seasons for the Braves, Mike fulton -Evich, and Joe for the Nationals, flame-throwing Steven Strasburg. I'll tell you what, oh, ace graphics person Gretchen Caney today came up with a real stumper. She put up these numbers and said, who is this, Strasburg or fulton -Evich? And I struck out on this deal. But take a look at this. On average, walks per inning, strikeouts per inning, they had the exact same opponent's average. Opponents slugging not that far apart. And actually, Mike's given up five home runs. Steven Strasburg, 10. So the numbers are a lot closer than you might think. Well, and if you're striking out, well, get in line. There's going to be a bunch of them tonight. Let's start with Mike fulton -Evich, who's on a great roll for Atlanta. Last four games, a sub-1 ERA, and fellas coming off that great start against the Red Sox at Fenway Park. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Fulton, you look at what he's been doing. He's a guy that's really taken the next step for us. And I said it yet last night. I think this was the most important game of him. His career as an Atlanta Brave. We went up there facing Chris Sale down two games to, to nothing in the series. And he came out and did exactly what a big time game pitcher did. Look at that. His last four starts have been phenomenal. And Joe for the National, Steven Strasburg. You know about the headlines, you know about the publicity, you know about the all star appearances. You also have to know that he's pitching a lot better against the, Bra against the Braves all of a sudden here in Atlanta. Well, as Jeff said in Braves Live, he's not just the overpowering. Fastball after fastball guy. You're getting to see some change-ups. You're going to see some breaking balls tonight. And then he works off his fastball, but not like he used to. And his numbers, his last five starts, outstanding. Four and one. Only nine walks against 40 strikeouts in 32 innings. But look what he's done against Atlanta. You know, the Braves had his number early in his career, not lately. And he's already pitched a gem of a game against the Braves in Washington earlier this year. So Atlanta's got their work cut out for him tonight. Braves are a clunker. Yeah, well, hopefully he will. Braves are a half game ahead of the Nationals in the East. They can stretch the lead to a game and a half if they can win game two tonight. We're going to start about 15 minutes late tonight. Andre Aldridge joins us after the break as we get you set for game two. Nationals and Braves baseball from SunTrust Park.
Georgia Lottery. And by the All South Highway Safety Team. The All South Highway Safety Team reminds you to play it safe by never mixing drinking and driving. It's the Nationals and the Braves from SunTrust Park, presented by Kaiser Permanente. And we welcome you back to SunTrust Park. So we're getting you closer to first pitch here in Atlanta against the Nats and ready to go in more ways than one, Mike fulton -Nevich. We know Asheville, North Carolina, part of Braves country, but you might not know it's a part of the uh, makeup of our starting pitcher to Mike, Mike fulton -Nevich. And for more on that, let's revisit a conversation he had with Paul Bird in this pitcher's talk. Mike Fultonavich, gas thrower, 95, 96, 97, can touch 100 when he wants to. And you are one of the fastest, I'll say, highest velo guys in the league for a starter. Like sure. in the, the seventh, eighth inning, you're still touching those sure. high numbers. You're not six, eight. Yeah. Nice pitching frame, but yeah. you get the most out of your body. So I want you to talk about how you transfer your body into the pitch because let's face it, velocity is important for scholarships or getting drafted. Or just in general, when you yeah. pitch, you want to throw as hard as you can and hit your spot. Yeah, velos, I mean, 95 is a new 90 these days. So I right. mean, that's what they're looking for you know but that's what gets you drafted but that's then you kind of have to take that yeah. into your own consideration put it to work and um but if you're a bigger guy like you said i'm not six four but if you're bigger i mean use that use that yeah. body to get yeah. down the mountain i mean use it to your advantage it's a god-given you know trait to, to have and um you know if you put a little meat on and all that you can use it but one of the problems you know i've had early um, in my career is I just get too quick and get downhill too fast, okay. not use my 6'4 frame, not use my body. You know, so, so can I'd, you give me an yeah, example yeah, of yeah, what so I'd that just looks come like? Up, you know, I'd get too quick and then I'd just be, I'd be already getting down the mound before Without my arm could catch arm up. Without your arm starting. Yeah, so, so I'm just like right here and then I'm right here instead of, you know, right here. Okay. You know, that's a big, big difference. So, um, you know, that was like the first couple years of my career. So I was in Asheville, North Carolina one day. Um, this pitching coach on the other team, you know, he just came out playing catch one day, a uh, long toss. He, he makes his way out to me. He says, hey, Fulte, what's up? He's like, no mean to step on any shoes, but, you know, can I say something real quick? I'm like, please. You know, just so you're being very, very coachable. Like yeah, I'd like, yeah, yeah, love, yeah. love, you know, um, if you got something for me, let me hear it. But, yeah, he just said one little thing. He's like, you get too quick down the hill. He's like, you're 6'5". He's like, use it. I'm like, perfect. He's like, what you got? He's like, He's like, just even exaggerate this stuff in, um, in your bullpens. He says, um, just a little thing, like when you come up, it's like exaggerate getting on that backside, staying tall. So I just noticed that your top half yeah. went this way to gather. Yeah, so he said, once you get that, you know, get used to it, exaggerate it in the mound and it'll just come naturally. Um, 
during the game. You know, during your bullpen's exaggerate it. You know, get back, get really focused on, you know, pausing, getting to that backside, and then exploding instead of, you know, Rushing getting out. down and then not yeah. everything's yeah, yeah. flowing. So he just did that. You know, I really exaggerated coming up, getting back, and then focusing, really driving after that. You know, coming up really slow into that, into this nice motion, you know, get, get your weight up where it needs to be over the over the mound yeah. is what I've been told uh -huh. and then just drive and make everything come smoothly down yeah. the mound and really just aggressively get after it so I think and, um, one of the things I really like about that is when you throw you're throwing off a decline so the yeah. tendency is you're being pulled this direction yeah when you fight that and go the other way it allows your arm to break later and be on time you as a hitter yeah. or a pitcher we want to be on time yeah just with that short little tweak though with that pitching coach told me I went from you know, topping out 97, um, like three games later, I finally topped out at 100, you know, which all the pitching coaches told me, like, hey, that's in the tank. And I'm like, <laughs> you the and I'm like I don't think so. But yeah, but then all of a sudden that's in your back pocket. Yeah. All of a sudden now you're, you know, we're learning how to pitch inside, outside, up, down. So it's so now all you coming together. Pitch. One little adjustment, that's it. Let me say this, what velocity does is it enables the hitter to make a decision mm -hmm. quicker. So you get away with a little bit more, but you know you still got to pitch and the hit bacon. your spots, which you talk about all the time, but having 100 in the tank <laughs> to go get it. Yep. Hey, thank you for your time. If you are a young man at home, get out the notes, watch this over again, and do some drills to get that velo going. And a very valuable lesson learned there in Asheville, North Carolina, that he takes with him to this very day. Definitely had in his last start five and a third innings of no-hit ball in Boston for Fulte. Finished with allowing only three hits over a season-high seven innings of work against that vaulted Red Sox lineup. And that was pretty good for our side. We'll be back with more. Chip, Joe, and French will have the call. Braves baseball coming up right after the break. It's the Braves and the Nets. It is June 1st, and the Atlanta Braves are in first in the National League Eastern Division. Welcome back to the booth. Chip Carey, Jeff Francoeur, Joe Simpson. The Braves are in first, and fellas, they're first in a lot of very important categories, not surprisingly, after two months. Actually, when you start thinking about how well the Braves' offense has been playing all year long, you wonder how long they can keep it up. Well, they've carried some pretty good numbers into June right here. Runs first, average first, on base and slugging second. I didn't see all that coming, did you? No, I tell you what, I thought we'd have a good offensive team. 
I didn't see those numbers, and we talked a little bit about last night. I think what makes this team so different from years past, Joe, is that we continually come at you every inning. It's a great thing to have, and you got to love the way the first two months have gone. What an exciting, I haven't seen fans this excited in a good five, six years around this joint. And you've yeah. got to be excited about the way Mike fulton is pitching. Again, coming off that excellent start against the Red Sox, fellas. Mike's 4-3 and three with a 255 earned run average. And he's pitched really well against the National League East within the division, 3-2 and two with a microscopic 188 ERA, very low average against him. His four keys tonight for pitching success He's got to have that good slider boy because these guys are all good fastball hitters and that slider was devastating in Boston and seven again. Can he go seven innings again and make it back to back starts in seven. Well we're about to find out as he pumps over a quick strike to Trey Turner the national shortstop. 69 delightful degrees. After an 11 minute delay to start proceedings tonight. And already Mike off to a better start than Sean Newcomb last night who <laughs> threw seven straight balls and was in immediate trouble. But he gave up just that one run and pitched brilliantly the rest of the way after 22 first inning pitches for Newcomb he threw 93 over seven innings. And a shot to right Mark is dives and he makes the grab. He took away two and maybe three. What a play. Just a great catch. Oh, that's definitely three, I think, right there after you dive with, with uh, Turner. Boy, he got up on top of that job and sliced it. it. And Nick's going to need a dry uniform. It rained for a good two, two and a half hours here in Atlanta. And I'm not just talking about sprinkles. I'm talking frog strangler type stuff. It was coming down. Well, the infield looks to be in pretty good shape. Outfield still draining as Bryce Harper greeted with a standing boo. One out as Fulton Evich delivers outside ball one. As I mentioned last night, hopefully we don't see it too much when we're hitting, but the umpire tonight, Tom Hallion behind the plate, best best strike three call in the game. He's going to throw his back out doing it. Harper a little late. I have a feeling he'll get a chance to demonstrate that tonight from one side or the other. I still always gave him a hard time because I still remember when Steven Strasburg's first start was against the Pirates on ESPN and he struck out 14 that night. And if you go back and look, Tom Hallion was ringing guys up six inches off the plate. He knew he was on ESPN. I was like, you got way too excited. Come on. He knew he knew who was watching that night. Uh -huh. Bryce Harper last night went 0 for 3 in the series opener. He walked in the first inning, stole a base, and was left stranded. He also struck out in the eighth inning against Dan Winkler, who was terrific. And that missed high, ball three. Harper with 18 home runs. That leads the National League. He's third with 40 RBIs. And now a dangerous 3-1 pitch is letter high and called a strike at the very top of the zone. Fulty walked three in that start at Boston, but he also only allowed three hits. So there were, one, there were not a lot of base runners. Roped into right field, Bryce Harper turns around 99 miles an hour. And he's aboard with the first hit of the game for the Nationals. That's Dave Martinez in his first year as the Nationals skipper. The Nationals middle of the pack as far as batting average is concerned. But they hit a lot of home runs. They've homered in 10 of their last 11 games. Their run differential is 50 over their opponents. And like the Braves, a very, very potent one through eight on the lineup card. Especially this guy, Anthony Rendon. It was the best Nationals hitter last night. Two hits, two RBIs, including a sack fly. And Rendon at 272 digs in and takes a ball 1-0. Well, he came in a hot hitter, and he improved on that last night. He's 10 for his last 27. 
You know, Harper's a little single right there. I'm okay with that, though. You know, 3-2, he challenged him, and he got a base hit. But it's better than to give him a free pass right there. Make him earn it. Yeah, nobody got hurt getting in front of it. No. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, but with Bryce, you can say that about a lot of pitchers. <laughs> Mike pulled a string, Rendon pulled it foul, and now Fulton Avich ahead, a ball, and two strikes. That looked like a mistake with his slider. He made very few mistakes with it in Boston. Oh, baby. Yeah. That was a hanger there. Hmm. But Rendon fouled it off. Now the one two is way outside. Something else to keep an eye on with Mike. We know his uh, high pitch counts per inning. He's a strikeout guy. That drives up the count a little bit. How efficient will he be when he gets to two strikes tonight? Can he finish off these national hitters quickly and keep his pitch count down? He did that in Boston. The pitch is served out of play. Still two and two. I think that's where that slider comes into play chip. He doesn't have to just keep pounding fastballs in there. They get fouled off. Especially to right handed hitters that slider was very effective. And I think you saw last night hopefully he's watched some too and a guy like Newcomb who only had two strikeouts last night but went 93 pitches in seven innings that don't always have to be strike three. That was however and there's the slider. First strikeout for Fulton Evich. Quickly Rendon is retired and Matt Adams the final out last night digs in. Well, this will show you how good the slider is because he just made one of the hottest hitters in the league chase it. Not just chase it look bad. Yeah. Matt Adams has had a great run with Washington. He essentially replaced Adam Lind on their 25 man roster. And Matt has hit 12 home runs this year. Back between Adams and Mark Reynolds are getting great production while Ryan Zimmerman is still on the disabled list. Harper at first two outs and the 1 0 pitch is grounded to second. Ozzie's got it and Fulton Evich is out of the first inning. No runs one hit. Steven Strasburg goes to work. Divisional foes four of those 23 wins have come against the Nationals the only change tonight Kurt Suzuki is behind the plate Freeman and Marquette is hope to tee off on Steven Strasburg who is rolling against the Braves of late here in Atlanta Strasburg's numbers against Atlanta his first seven starts of his career almost a 70 ERA seven home runs his last five five and oh, 134 and no home runs allowed 
And I think it's kind of goes back to what you said, Jeff. He's not just a 98 mile an hour heaver anymore. He's, he's actually using his breaking ball and change up effectively. He gave a lot of credit to Mike Maddox with that, who obviously Mike's, I think, with St. Louis now, right? Yep. Yes. I think moved on. But he said Mike really taught him thinking as a pitcher and not feeling like you got to be max effort every pitch. And something else Steven has done is gone to that modified windup, if you will, that looks like a stretch. That helps him conserve some energy, which he might need to do, even though it's a cool night. It's a humid night in Atlanta. Let's see how he fares here at SunTrust Park. Anders skies one toward left and Soto drifts back and Juan is there for out number one. Ozzie Albies the batter he's got a five game hitting streak one up one down for Atlanta in the first. Ozzie's on a nice run as I said a five game streak eight hits in those five games after a one for 17 run at the plate. He scored a third inning run and drove home a huge seventh inning insurance run with a double last night. And that's taken outside ball one. We've got a special guest with us on the phone tonight. Major League Baseball Hall of Famer Braves Hall of Famer. And current star of the MLB Network and Fox Sports John Smoltz. John great to have you with us on the broadcast happy June 1st I'd love to get your thoughts on what you're seeing from a national perspective of this Braves team after the first two months of this season. Well it's certainly surprising on a national as far as how ahead of the curve they are with their position players and certainly their play um, maybe to the degree how long can they keep winning games you know from the comeback version that might be one of the trends you don't know. Uh, can play out, but certainly exciting. People are talking about how exciting they are to watch and if they can get any kind of pitching and if they can get any sustained pitching, maybe a wild card or potential, you know, playoff berth could be in the making and then moves could be made in the second half. So I think that the best way to describe what people nationally are talking about, the Braves are exciting to watch again. Hey, John, it's Joe. Uh, if you're, are you in town? I am at the airport getting ready to fly to New York and do the Mets and Cubs tomorrow. OK well if you've got time before the plane takes off why don't you come join us and work for free. <laughs> well is I that, is, is that a no. If I, knew, <laughs> if I if I knew my plane was going to be delayed this long I certainly would have swung by. Well the weather's great here at the ballpark so I don't know what you're complaining about down mm -hmm. there at Hartsfield as Freddie Freeman digs in two outs. And the base is empty and a swing and a miss. Strike one. It's multi Frenchy. Yes. How you doing, buddy? I've got a smile on my face for the last 36 hours and I can't take it off. Really? What? Did you sell your house? Yeah. yeah, what happened? No, that would be the biggest smile you've ever seen. <laughs> <in your life. laughs> uh, this is just this is a uh, this is a little bit of a smile that um, uh, has been hard to um, take off my my face here in the last uh, 24 hours a one take open <laughs> yeah Johnny Johnny one take yeah that would be great <laughs> if I could continue to do that yeah okay well we'll keep guessing we'll try to figure out what you're talking about first yeah. the, the O2 pitch for for Freddie Freeman from Strasburg is upstairs I guess you'll have to clue us in yeah did you play golf or something yesterday <laughs> No, I, I guys, I have a full head of hair. I know you haven't seen me in a long time, but I, <laughs> that's worth a smile. Yeah, <laughs> I went ahead and you know I did the Brian Urlacher thing. So tune in tomorrow, Fox at seven o'clock. That's gonna be a, <laughs> a ratings a ratings bonanza. <laughs> John, stick around. We'll get to the serious stuff if we if the FCC okay. allows us. No score after one. <laughs>
Tell the story for the fans who didn't hear the wonderful news. You have qualified for the U.S. Senior Open, and I'm sure that's what you were talking about with this 36-hour uh, <laughs> emotional roller coaster. Yeah, you know, Jeff Francoeur has been trying to beat me forever, and uh, he finally beat me one time. But but now I've been able to reach goal number two in my life, <laughs> and that is uh, playing on the senior tour. And I just can't describe the feeling other than it's just I'm numb. I, I didn't sleep last night, to say the least. And now I'm playing out what I what the next three weeks are going to look like. Well, you're a relatively young senior. You're 51, right? Correct. Is that yeah. correct? So how old were these ancient guys that you beat in the playoff <laughs> yesterday? Well, some of them were 70 and some were like 81 <laughs> to 82. But I'm telling you, their short game was phenomenal. <laughs> was Gary Player out there yesterday? <laughs> well, hey, congratulations. No, it's, it, it's a great thing. And we're, we were very proud of you and happy for you. But I, I want to give you a heads up here. We don't really want to hear a hole by hole description on this thing. So totally understand. We totally just, understand. this last hole, how do you win with a double bogey? <laughs> Well, you know what? At that point in sudden death, I'm just playing match play. <laughs> and I was afforded the opportunity. He messed up first, and then I messed up second. Uh, and then he messed up one more time. It's just its a weird format to think about qualifying for one spot. And your nerves get the best of you the way I can explain it. In baseball, I had these same feelings early on, and I learned to never have them again. And through some of my worst emotions and worst failures, I was able to be better for it the next time. I can promise you the next time I'm in this situation, it will be a different result because I am just being honest. I, I thought about things happening before they happen. And I say this all the time in my broadcast, when players think about the end result before they execute it, usually bad things happen. And uh, I thought about, I, I thought about before I hit the shot that I'm about to qualify for the U S open. And, um, that's a mistake I'll never make again if given the same opportunity. So that's what's wrong with my golf game right yeah. now. I'm thinking about 68, 67 before I even go out there and tee off. <laughs> uh, I'm just, yeah, just <clears throat> my final comment, John, was uh, when we heard the news yesterday was that, well, he must have gotten a new putter. Is that well, the case? You know what, Joe? <laughs> believe, believe it or not, I, I, I did, but I got nervous and I went back to Old Faithful of the 50. <laughs> Putters I have in my garage. <laughs> this one, this one keeps coming back. That's that's. A, keeps, so I think ahead. that's going to be the best part is Smoltzy from day one to day two of the U.S. Senior Open. Does he use the same putter? Yeah. I promise you guys, and you know me as well as anybody. I went to the PGA Superstore the day before <laughs> my qualifier, and I tried to buy a game. I bought a 54 uh, wedge. I bought shorts, shirt. <laughs> I tried to buy a game and it worked. And well, good. you know what? Those clubs came through. And new and new head covers. That always works. <laughs> new head covers and visors that have the Ian Poulter hair going yeah. out of them. <laughs> do you do you have your outfits picked out for the tournament? I mean, you've, you've got that. That's very important. Please, too, right? please let Catherine do that. Will you please oh, let her pick in, your outfits yeah. out? She's in charge of that. Okay, and, good. Um, good. And, and I will be finding places to do actually something I never do, and that's practice. Uh, be at the network for 10 days, and I'm literally going to go practice on some things. And uh, I'm not going to lie. I I'm going to have the time of my life. I'm going to hope to get my competitiveness to where I can play good enough so that it's not the uh, nationwide experience all over again. But um, this truly is uh, one of the coolest things in my life after baseball. Well, Smoltzy, congratulations. We're thrilled for you. We, uh, we kid you because we love you. Have a great time. We'll be watching you every stroke of the way. All right, guys, I'm, uh, if USGA approves, I'll be wearing a mic. Atta so, baby, uh, love it. Gosh. Heads up.
in Atlanta. Mike Boltanevich with three strikeouts in his first two frames. Steven Strasburg will face cleanup man Nick Markakis coming off a 42 hit month of May for Atlanta. Nick starts action tonight at 333 for the year. Seven homers, 38 driven in. We've mentioned this a couple of times that among active players, Nick Markakis has more hits than any other player never named to an all-star team. That has got to change in 2018. All-star balloting has begun. You can go online and vote. Braves.com is the place to vote for your favorite Braves who should be very well represented at the All-Star game, which this year, fellas, takes place at Nationals Park. I think he's a shoe-in. Yeah. I say that knowing that, that things can change, but if he doesn't get elected this year, then there's something wrong. You know, he might not win the fan vote, because of how it goes and what but if the coaches or the peers don't vote them then it's a crime well we get to vote chip and i get to vote for the players of the month pitcher of the month rookie of the month etc and we both voted for nick for player of the month i saw that today i, I made sure y'all voted for him you bet well that was no we didn't need any urging <laughs> he was uh his numbers were right there fourth in the league in batting average First in multi-hit games, first in hits. Fifth in total bases, toughest guy to strike out in the league. Truly a resurgent year for Nick Markakis. As he takes one up the middle, Turner bobbles, picks it with a bare hand. What a lucky bounce. Tough break for Markakis. Strasburg gets some help, as does Trey Turner, one out. Yeah, you know, Turner's been a little sloppy defensively. He's made eight errors at shortstop. I believe Dansby Swanson has made two, and that's taking into consideration Dansby was on the DL for 10 days, but that's quite a difference. You always wonder with Trey Turner, too, if it, it's one of those things, Joe, where he played center field last year. They had, you know, for his sake, he's not in one place all the time. and. That's tough because he's not a super utility guy. I mean, he's no. your main guy. Strike one to Kurt Suzuki, the Braves catcher this evening. Yeah, I think Padres might like to have Trey Turner back. They might like to redo that deal. I think the Padres might like to redo a lot of deals. Yeah. No balls, one strike. And that one hit into the shift. Defoe on the third base side of second makes the play. That's a 4-3 put out with a line underneath. And two outs. Here's Johan Camargo. Trey Turner was acquired by the Nationals with Joe Ross for Steven Souza and Travis Ott. They went to Tampa Bay. Will Myers, Ryan Hannigan, Jose Castillo, and Gerardo Reyes went to the Padres from Tampa Bay in a deal consummated December 14th, 2014. I'll have to say the Nats won the trade. San Diego came in second, and Tampa was big losers. Absolutely. That one skips up there, and Camargo takes ball one. Five up, five down for Strasburg with a strikeout. One fly out, three ground outs. The rest of his out distribution so far tonight. And the 1 0. I thought it was great when we were talking to Smoltzy, and he said something, a word that kind of hit me when he was talking about our team and our pitching. He said sustainable. Mm -hmm. Because I think he knows we do have arms. Right. And, thing, and guys that can go out there and pitch. You saw Newcomb last night, Fulte. Some, but I think that's his point. Can consistently do it throughout the season. Broken bat fly ball to right. And Camargo now a 2-1 count. This guy Strasburg's been good home and road, but especially on the road. 4-1. and one, And that 197 ERA is tied for the sixth best road ERA in all Major League Baseball. Only three homers allowed. Well, he has evolved as a pitcher. I think you 
guys touched on that in our opening comments. He's not just a guy rearing back and throwing his fastball as hard as he can. He has learned the craft of pitching. And what an advantage for Strasburg to have a guy like Max Scherzer on your staff to help you learn those lessons. That's smoked into right field. That'll bounce in front of Bryce Harper. So Camargo picked out a bat with a knock in it, and that's the first Atlanta hit of the night. Well, you talk about certain guys. You can see right there, right down the middle. But, you know, you talk about certain guys, and it's funny how it happens. Scherzer learned from Verlander up in Detroit, and right. then Scherzer comes here. Strasburg learns from him, and it just passes down. But you saw, I remember, Strasburg coming out. I remember, like I said, the first time I faced him, it was like 99 over your head, not knowing. And now you see he lives mid-90s, knows he's got it in the tank, but knows i got to be able to pitch. Well, they're hoping, and I think they believe, the Nationals, that he's gotten past that reputation he had that he was a little soft. There's always something wrong. His neck was sore. His knee didn't feel right. It was too hot. It was too cold. And he pitched really well in the postseason last year against the Cubs, and they thought that, okay, that's the turning point right there. He's, he's come of age that way. And like you said, you you look at a guy like Max Scherzer and what he's doing, you have no excuse not to go out there, say you got a sore neck or he's a great example. One ball, one strike. And a little chopper over the mound. Strasburg deflects. Throw to first is late. Everybody's safe. Tucker with an infield hit and the Braves have back to back knocks with two outs and the inning continues for Dansby. Looked like it tipped off of Strasburg's glove enough just to slow it down for a base hit. Strasburg is a tall guy 6 5. And obviously safe. Speed kills. Yeah Tucker he can fly. <laughs> So let's see what Dansby can do. The Braves, as you know, have been an excellent two-out offensive club all year. See if he can find a hole. Adams way off the line at first. And Dansby was way late. I had a great chat with Dansby today. I asked him about that axe-handled bat and the fact that he's not using it anyway. He said, well, it had a hole in it. <laughs> OK, and uh, he said, but honestly, he said, I like to choke up on the bat a little bit and it feels weird choking up on that axe handle bat that's kind of oblong. So it feels funny in your hand. It's funny you say that I've talked to so many guys that have used it. I even myself have tried it never in a game, but in BP and you either hear guys that love it or hate it. Mm -hmm. And I, I never liked it the same way you just it almost like just puts you in one grip and that was it. Not that you're doing all sorts, but like I said, even if you want to choke up in half an inch, it felt weird. The original plan for Dansby was to try that bat to take a little pressure off the wrist, which was sore. Right. But he's back to the traditional handled bat with two on, two out, and that caught a corner. Dansby has three career hits against Strasburg in 10 tries. He'll have to protect the plate here down to his last strike in the Atlanta second. Strasburg is ready. Here it comes. And a good stop by Severino. It's two and two. That's been the pitch right there that he's really, to me, gotten him over the hump is that changeup. That's hard. It's 89, 90, 91, yeah. but see the downward tilt on it. Obviously, too low on that one, but it's really turned into his strikeout pitch, if you ask me. Hard throwers that eventually learn how to change speeds are the ones that succeed, the ones that just continually throw hard and don't adapt. They're not here very long. The 2-2. Two -two. 
Did he go? Yes, he did. He's rung up at the plate. And Strasburg has his second strikeout. The Braves leave a pair in the second. Strasburg leads off the third scoreless. Talk a little bit more about Nick Markakis, because since joining the Braves in 2015, only one other player in the National League has played in more games than Nick has. And he was coming off a neck fusion surgery, so he didn't have any off-season condition that first season. He played 156 games then, but that's just what he's been about his whole career. Before the game, he told me when he was 22 and a Baltimore Oriole, Jeff Conine, Miguel Tejada, and those veterans are the ones that kind of laid down to law as far as how you needed to be a professional and go about your business. And that's how he's done it his entire career. The production is kind of rubbing off on everybody in our clubhouse. And he also told me that the young guys in our clubhouse are noticing everything that he's doing up here, Chip. He's a pro's pro. That's all you need to say about Nick Markakis. And hopefully, hopefully headed to the All-Star game. Strasburg leads off for the Nationals. We enter inning number three. Two strikeouts for Steven. Three strikeouts for Mike fulton who's up to 72 strikeouts now in 62 innings of work. There's some more of that hand-me-down, Jeff, that you're talking about, like the influence of Verlander, then Scherzer to Strasburg. Same thing that Nick was talking about with Andre in terms of the influence those veterans had on him. No, oh, there's no doubt. And and then you look at it for me, I, I thought it was a no brainer. I know there was talk this offseason about Nick being traded maybe or someone, but especially with Acuna coming up, I said you have to have a guy like Nick Marcakis, even if it's for one year, to show him how to play the game the right way. Little dribbler hit to the left side. Camargo's got it, and he'll flip to first in time to get Strasburg. Let me ask you about the 05 season, Jeff, when you and Brian and some of the other baby Braves came up. That had to be a huge resource for you guys getting to the big leagues for the first time, not just in spring training, but when the games mattered the most to have so many veterans in that locker room. Oh, it was awesome. You know, having Chipper, having Andrew, and I'll tell you one guy that was unbelievable to me was Brian Jordan, and we joke about it because I came up when Brian went on the DL, and he always told me that I took his job. But I told him, yeah, I did. Someone else didn't took mine 10 years later. But, right. you know, Brian was so great because he always lended a hand, you know, telling me what to do. And you never forget that stuff as a player. Joe, who was your guy when you got to the major leagues? Or were there several when you joined the Dodgers? Yeah, it was a ready-made team. There were no openings at all. And they were all veteran players. And Bill Russell, the shortstop, is the guy. His nickname was Ropes. And not because of the way he hit. Camargo going foul ground at the third base box. Two out. But because when he got called to the big leagues, one of the veterans said, let's take Bill out and show him the ropes. Hmm. And that meant how to act, how to be a professional, how to be a major league player. And so ropes is the guy that schooled me. 
You know, another thing I think that's helped the Braves, and y'all have been here a long time, you've seen the transition, good and bad. When I came up in the minor leagues, we knew how to play the game when we came up to the big leagues because that was what I expected. If we didn't, we weren't going to be here. And I'll be honest, we got away from that in our minor league system for a while there. And the guys didn't know how to play the game. And I know, you know, there's people down there now getting that system back to where, you know, you show up. There's a certain way you go about things. And if you're not going to, you're not going to be here. And that's the way it ought to be. Trey Turner, the batter, swing and a foul tip. Mike's got an excellent slider tonight. That's good. One of your keys. And he's pitching efficiently. He's retired seven straight nationals. 41 pitches. Quickly, two strikes on Turner. To your point, Jeff. Allen, right off the foot of Kurt. To your point, Major League managers and coaches don't want to teach. They don't want to have to show you and teach you how to play. You should already know how to play when you get here. It's a matter of refining it when you get here. No doubt. I remember when we came up, remember, we didn't even have team stretch. And people always ask, y'all don't have team stretch. I said, because Bobby said, hey, if you're not if you're not doing it, you'll be out of here. I'll get someone else to come up and do it. But for me, it's huge when you look at our team. We talked about Freddie last night with his base running. When you're two guys that probably play harder than anybody else on your team are Freddie and Nick, no one else can say anything. Right. One, two pitch. Strong. Three there right down Peachtree. See Tom Hallion throw his back out right there. <laughs> yeah. Eight up, eight down for Fulton Evans. He struck out four. Look and listen. Oh! <laughs> night after a terrible thunderstorm blew through North Atlanta and lasted for a couple of hours and it looks like the nasty weather for the most part is going to move away for a while great weather expected all week coming up in Atlanta and hopefully at least for the next two days while we're still here good crowd here tonight too the first place Braves and the second place Nationals we've got Friday night fireworks a lot of stars on the field. You're right, Joe. Great crowd. Well, game two as we begin the month of June with a scoreless game. And that stayed high. One ball, two strikes. For Mike Fultonevich, Ender and Ozzie coming up. Concourses are full. Here inside SunTrust Park. Battery will be rocking tonight. Just missed. Two balls, two strikes.
Fulte's got a hit off of him. Maybe he can get another one. Laid off two tough pitches. Not to be that time. There's the third strikeout for Strasburg, and the home third is underway. One out. Visit Synovus for your banking, lending, and investing needs. Synovus, the bank of here. You know, we talk about, Joe was talking about other guys helping you too when you're younger. And, you know, you always remember certain things. I said Brian Jordan, off the brag on Joe. I still remember to this day, first or second road trip, myself, Kelly Johnson, and Lange. Joe took the three of us out for dinner one night. We were on the road and just, you know, we had a few drinks, talked baseball, talked, you know, the game strategy and different stuff. And your first year or two in the big league, those are the things that, you know, you remember the rest of your career because those are the times you're soaking every single knowledge up. And just to see a guy do that, that at the same time, you know, was a media member, but, you know, had played and it meant the world to the three of us. You know, it was great. Three outfielders, I might point out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. All right, let me get back to that. He wasn't taking the infield out. He took the three outfielders. But but that's paying, paying it forward, you know. People do that for you. You do that. You pass it along. One ball, one strike. And Ender swung at that a little late. One and two the count. He flied out to left to start the game against Strasburg, who surrendered two hits. Holtonevich has allowed a single to Bryce Harper, and that's it. As our pitching duel settling in here in the first third of the game. Little pop into shallow left. This was a communications problem last night, but not tonight. As Soto got there, Turner backed off the last moment, and Ender retired for the second time to left. Two outs. If I'm Soto, I want him backing off a whole lot more than that. He just kind of froze right in the path of the young player. You wonder there if that's Turner not trusting what happened last night. And I have to give Joe props. He took us to a nice meal. It wasn't like in and out burger. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it was a sit down meal. Wow, he's changed. Here's Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> the pitch is up and away. One ball, no strikes. All be struck out his first time again coming in to play tonight with a five game hitting streak. That is easy 97 mile an hour stuff that can't be fun to face. Very slow deliberate preparation to let it go. That's hit toward Turner at short long throw in plenty of time and Strasburg has a one two three third.
good he is. We all know about the numbers. We don't necessarily know him as fans and media, but that's the same for players in a sense. I talked to Matt Adams before the game, and he said he had tons of respect for Harper before joining the Nats, but being inside the clubhouse, watching him go about his work and how he deals with his teammates, which none of us see, he says, yeah, Harper knows he's a very good ball player, but the other things he does makes us all respect him inside the clubhouse an awful lot, fellas. And why not? One of the best players in the game, although you look at Harper's numbers, Collectively, they're good numbers, not great. Low batting average for Bryce Harper. Kind of odd to see him hitting in the 230s after two months of the season. However, 18 homers and 40 knocked in ain't too shabby. Still got a 931 OPS. Yeah, he just still doesn't miss mistakes. This is why, for me, I, I believe that Bryce is one of the top two, three, four players in baseball. But that's why, to me, Mike Trout's the best player in the game. And there's Mike Trout never has an off month. It doesn't off seem like year. it. And as you saw in that graphic, Harper heating up. As that one's out of play. Foul. And look, this is a big year for Bryce Harper. Not to belabor the point, but everybody knows he's a free agent at the end of the year. Will he stay in Washington? Will the Nationals ownership pony up and keep him? Does he want to stay there? If those things don't happen, who will? try to get Bryce Harper. Needless to say his past would indicate a contract of enormous size as he swung through that slide. Wow. That was explosive. Five strikeouts for Fulton Evich. This is a power slider right here folks. Back foot. Biting in on him. Tried to pull his hands in to get to it and couldn't. I promise you, if you go back at the end of the year and see how many times Bryce struck out, he might not miss a ball by more than he just missed that pitch right, right there. That's the 49th time he has struck out. It's the second time he struck out in this series. And Rendon, the batter, he struck out in the first inning on a slider and just ducked away from another one. You wonder sometimes, too, if Fulte, if these guys start feeding off each other, if he sees what Newcomb did last night, says ah, I need to do that. I hope that happens. What did he do slip a little bit on his follow through and came tumbling off the mound. He kept his footing. Nick Rendon saying something to him. A little Bob Gibson like follow through there with the high leg finish. And a ground ball hit sharply to second. Ozzy placed perfectly and two out. Well, a major league manager told me earlier this year that he sees a young Max Scherzer in Mike fulton -Evich. This manager said he has, as we all know, an exceptional arm. It's controlling that arm and using all those weapons and learning how to pitch that will be the next step, he feels, before Mike can maybe ascend to the level of a back-to-back -back Cy Young Award winner. If that happens, look out. Yeah, and you never know because you go back and look, you know, when Max Scherzer with the, was in Arizona for a couple years, he was just a hard thrower. We, we scored some runs off him. His first year or two in Detroit, we hit him around pretty good. It was like all of a sudden he hit a period where it just took off. I started using all his pitches, and he developed all of his pitches together. That's exactly what I asked him before the game today. I said, what was the, was it something someone said or you did? He said, I learned how to spin the baseball. He always had the fastball. He always had the changeup, which for a power guy is kind of an odd combination to be able to throw hard and soft with great success. But he said it was the breaking ball that changed his life. That's incredible. That, right there. that really is amazing stat. Well, you know, Joe, what's the one thing they always say when you come to the big leagues? If you're going to make it to the big leagues, you be you better be able to hit a what? Fastball. Fastball. And they're going to test you, especially inside. Absolutely. So when guys come up, 98, they just they hit it now. Yeah, it's nothing new to them. They're no, seeing it. They've seen it since low A. Two balls, two strikes for Adams, and pulled foul. It says a lot about the state of the game when a player of the caliber of Freddie Freeman can say 98 isn't special anymore. I don't know that we would have ever thought we would have heard that. 15 20 years ago. No way. 
And that's not to say that these pitchers aren't special, but to your point, so many guys throw so hard, it's routine for them now. That wasn't routine, though. Six strikeouts for Fulton Evich. He's retired 11 consecutive Nationals hitters. He's through four innings in a scoreless duel with Steven Strasburg here in Atlanta. The fourth inning, Freeman, Marquecas, and Suzuki up to face Steven Strasburg. Our duel continues into game two. Freeman bounced out to third in the first inning. He carries a 13-game hitting streak, which is the longest active hitting streak in the major leagues tonight. And that's up and away. Ball one. On this 1st of June, some bad news around the major leagues. Mookie Betts disabled, side problem. Clayton Kershaw is going to miss a month with a back strain after he pitched for Los Angeles. Which means the Braves will miss him when we head to Los Angeles next. Now the Betts thing happened before the last game of the series with the Braves. He was scratched from the lineup. Betts could miss two months. He's still going to win American League MVP. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Ball one strike. 89 mile an hour slider, and Freddie couldn't pull the trigger. Well, if you like high 90s gas, hard sliders, and a good changeup, we got two people working tonight for you. The one two. Smoked into right field, a base hit for Freddie Freeman. Freddie's got great numbers against Strasburg. 44 at bats now. He came in hitting 357 against him with four homers, and he squared up that heater. That was 98 right there, and I think I was walking by the TV. I can't remember today, but it said Freddie's leading all of baseball by like at least 25 points in pitches at 95 miles per hour over. Shows you how quick his hands are. And to our point, 98. Nothing. And, yeah. And there's three guys standing out there on the grass, basically, on the right side, and he hit it so hard nobody could even make a reaction to it. So dare we say shift that again for Freddie Freeman. Yeah. I remember in 15, first off man on. 15 when I was with the Phillies, we faced Strasburg, and he had got me pretty good, and I think the count was 1-2, and he threw me a 90-mile-per-hour changeup, and I hit it a mile for a home run. I remember thinking... Threw right into my bat speed. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> Adams at first makes the play. The throw to second is going to be in time. Matt Adams, not known for his, shall we say, throwing accuracy, just made a nice play. Freddie thinks he missed the tag. They're going to take a look at it. 
Say he might have got him, but he didn't get him by much. You can no. see the swipe. He almost did it too quick. Yeah, that's almost that's exactly what he did. If he got him, it was a glancing blow at the ankle. And apparently not enough there for the Braves to challenge the call. So it's double play. So here's Kurt Suzuki quickly two outs. Here's a better look. Boy, if he got him, he just grazed his pant leg. Washington, another shift for the Braves catcher, and Kurt takes a strike. Swing. One ball, one strike. He was in the midst of a nice long homestand. Eight games, four with the Mets, four with the Nationals. We head to the West Coast after our game Sunday afternoon. San Diego and Los Angeles, the destinations out west. 1 1 pitch is fouled away. So let's Make hay while we're at home. And Kurt Suzuki's done that. He's our Yellowwood bringing the lumber feature. His numbers at home, last 11 games, big numbers for average and slugging, nine RBIs. Kurt's as good as anybody I've seen at hooking it down that left field corner. Sure is. Hey, and the way these guys are pitching, one might feel like 10. Runs that is one ball, two strikes. Braves have three hits. Washington has one. And here it is. Right back where it came from and into center. So Kurt keeps up his good work at home. Second hit of the inning and Camargo bats. He picked up the first Braves hit in inning number two. And he hit him where they ain't. Three guys on the left side of the diamond and he hit it to the right side on that slider. And Strasburg looking at his glove like it had a hole in it. Couldn't get it down in time. It wasn't a bad pitch, Joe. Had it on the outer part of the plate. Just like you said, he hit it where they weren't. That was some good hitting by Kurt, who's usually looking to pull everything. He might have gotten something he was actually looking for there. And ball one outside for the Braves' third baseman. This is the longest stretch of home games in a row for Atlanta until August 10th through the 19th when they play 10 straight games here. That's real short home stands. I say it feels like been on the road the whole year. It much. does. It really does. And hopefully that'll come back to help Atlanta in the late, late the dog days, August and September. Yeah, it's nice to be home during the dog days. Way outside. Severino had to stretch out to make that grab. And it's two and one. It's been a great home stand for Camargo. A couple of home runs against the New York Mets. And they were hit almost to the identical spot. Low line drives that cleared the monkey grass in the first two rows in the chop house seats. And he had a good rip there. Two and two. Yeah, he did. Good cut. around the plate. So here it gets interesting. Suzuki will get a head start. If Camargo can split a gap, remember the outfield is drenched. I have a wet baseball. That might make things tougher for the Nationals to make a couple of throws. But the tough parts ahead for Camargo. He's got to make contact. Kurt's got a giant lead. Adams plays behind him at first. 
There he goes the pitch he is called strike three outside corner a generous corner and Strasburg takes advantage. Atlanta gets a couple of hits in the fourth inning but nothing else. We go to the fifth still scoreless in game two. MLB at bat your number one Braves app. Customize your experience and catch every moment this season. Get Braves home screen icons and features like the MLB.tv game of the day, pitch tracking, in game highlights, radio broadcast stats, news, and more. Download MLB at bat today. Juan Soto leads off for Washington. Goodwin and Severino to follow. Fultonevich has set down 11 in a row. Similar to what we saw the Braves do last night. I know Soto's got off to a good start, but you wonder if he's seen pitching like he's seen the last two nights here. I'd say no. <laughs> yeah, me too. Newcomb, Viz. You, Jeff, you had a reputation of being a good fastball hitter, and when you were facing a guy like Strasburg, or in, in this case right here against uh, Fulton Evich, were there times where you would go to the plate and look for something else? First pitch, like a slow breaking ball or a slider. Absolutely there was and I think the biggest thing what got me in trouble sometimes was you know you talk about like you said good fastball hitter I gave away my strength sometimes trying to cover some weaknesses mm -hmm. which round ball to first Freeman's got it the flip to full team. 12 up 12 down and going back to last night's game fellas the Braves pitching staff has now retired 32 of the last 36 Nationals hitters. Ooh. Some good work. But, you know, Joe, getting back to your question, you know, trying to finish here, my, my big thing is, you know, if you're a good fastball hitter, don't miss. That's what Gary Sheffield talked to me about when I got to the Mets a little bit. Hey, I, he goes, I made a whole career hitting nothing but fastballs. And every once in a while you hit a hanging slider, but he's like, your weakness is the slider low and away. If they throw it there, you're not going to hit it anyways. You know? Yeah. That's that old baseball adage of why look for something you can't hit. Absolutely. Goodwin takes a strike. Goodwin just back off the disabled list today. He was out with a wrist problem. And so for the Nationals, um, I don't want to say needed reinforcements because they played so well, but let's be honest, Washington at 32 and 23, they haven't had their team together virtually all year long. Now they're going to have some decisions to make though Joe in the outfield mm -hmm. when Adam Eaton comes back right. One ball two strikes. Eaton had some surgery to clean up his ankle which was still causing him some discomfort. They feel like they've got that under control and he's. 
Probably going to be back sooner rather than later. Yeah, he says he feels better than he has in a long time. Now the 2-2 to Goodwin. And strike three at the knees. 97. And Goodwin couldn't pull the trigger. He might have got caught looking for something else. Yeah, I don't know what he was. He had to be looking something else there, Joe. That is right down Peachtree right there. Tom's back's getting a workout now the last sure couple is. innings. That's it to third. Camargo's got it. Severino's an easy out. 14 up, 14 down. Fultonevich threw five shutout frames. Fifth inning, Kevin Egan and Jillian Sakovitz will be down at Mercedes Benz tomorrow on the call for Atlanta United. The five stripes battle to stay on top of the MLS Eastern Conference. They take on the Philadelphia Union. Our pregame coverage starts at 7 Eastern on Fox Sports Southeast and streaming live on the Fox Sports Go app. Look at that glow. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah, bright orange and flamingo pink sunset tonight. Wow, look at you. Nice colors. Yeah. Right? No wonder you're the best dressed man in St. Augustine. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Beautiful night. A lot of competition uh, down there. That's exactly right. Look at that. That was a beautiful shot. Well, you can't ask for a better pitching duel than what we've seen through the first four and a half innings. Strasburg has scattered. Four Atlanta hits. He's struck out four. Mike Fultonevich has struck out seven. He has retired 14 straight hitters. And the Braves come up looking for a little mayhem on the base pass with the lower third coming up. First run's going to mean a lot. Yep. Let's see if Tucker can run into one. I think what's great for our staff, Joe, is you know all you ever hear about is the Nat staff, the Nat staff, the Nat's doing this, and mm -hmm. the, you know for for our guys to go out there and go toe to toe with them, it's got to give them a lot of confidence going forward. Brian Snitker paid a lot of uh, respect to Tanner Roark last night after last night's game too. He really likes him and how he competes and bulldog out there for. The Nationals. He came up on the short end for a very rare opera, very rare time against Atlanta. One ball, one strike, four runs, five walks. Allowed by Roark last night. You might not see five walks again the rest of this year for him. No. Okay, the Braves hitters are going to have to. Tune it up a little bit. Freddie's the only one that's really turned around that fastball. He was 
late there, but not a piece. Either that or not miss a mistake. Yeah. Could change up bat speed like myself. You know, you look there, and that's 98, Joe, and that's you talk about it. No matter how good off-speed stuff he has, when you go up there plate, you got to be looking fastball against a guy like this, especially with two strikes. Especially. The one-two is cut on a missed, and Tucker is down on strikes. A 91 mile an hour changeup that dived out of the zone. And there's the first out. Do you know how many guys I played with that would love to have thrown 91 period? We work with one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm glad he's not watching tonight. Yeah, look at that average. 117 on his change up. Almost gonna, half the time a swing and miss. Gonna have to make sure I text Thomas. Uh -huh. Let him know about what Chip said up mm -hmm. here. I say it with all due respect. <laughs> As Swanson digs in and takes a strike. Well, you guys make a good point about the Braves and the Nationals. Look, the Nationals have been the cream of the crop in the division the last couple of years. You might recall from 2015 to 2016, the Braves went 1 and 19 against the Nationals up at Nationals Park. Yeah, that was ugly. Atlanta has turned that around in the last couple of years. Last season, the Braves went 6 and 4 at Nats Park. This year in Atlanta, the Braves are three and one against the Nationals and lead the season series. So the Braves know they can play with the Nationals now. The next step is doing what they did last night. And hopefully what they'll do tonight, win a tight, well-pitched game. Well, I think if you're Washington, for those guys out there, you're looking at what the Braves are doing, what the Phillies are doing. You know that, hey, our window's closing here in this division. Uh, oh, and I've yeah. said it. They, I love the guys on their team. I think they're great, but they have underachieved a lot the last five years. One ball, two strikes for Dansby with one out. And strike three outside corner. Strasburg has struck out three in a row. He's got six. Guys, take a look at these last two pitches to Dansby. And tell me what you're supposed to do with these pitches. First one will be two pitches ago. That was 96 away, outer third, and then 97 on the outside corner that came back a little bit. What are you supposed to do with that? <laughs> Go sit down, tip, yeah. your, tip your cap. There's yeah. a reason he's a $160 million pitcher. Just missed with that one away. And Severino's glove never moved. So now Fulton Evich, the batter, he struck out in his lone trip. And that one tipped and caught. It's an even count. Fulton needs to swing now. <laughs> <laughs> one one pitch he tried it and it's fouled away Strasburg's been efficient too he's thrown just 66 pitches 47 strikes when you got to imagine for Fulty out on the mound this has got to do a lot for your confidence when you go up against Chris Sale do that now you're facing you know basically two of the top probably six seven pitchers in baseball you're going toe to toe. Yeah, it's a it's a big confidence booster. Strasburg just struck out the side in the fifth. He'll lead off the sixth.
where the Cubs are in town. Our Xfinity game break takes us to a matchup between Wheeler and Chatwood, both pitching pretty well until Chatwood offered up this two-seamer. And Brandon Nimmo, wow, on an 0-2 count, just tattooed it to the opposite field. It is 2-0 as I speak, fellas. They are in the sixth inning. Back to you guys. How refreshing to see a guy hit a home run and smile as he's running around the bases. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Very proud of himself, and he ought to be. Nimmo's turning himself into a pretty good player with this opportunity he's been given. You bet. Not bad for a kid that didn't play high school baseball. Yeah, finding Nemo's playing good. Yes, yeah, he, is. he is. Well, Mike Fultonevich ought to feel good about what he's done. He's our Coors Light refreshing finish. He's set down 14 consecutive nationals. He's given up a hit to Bryce Harper back in the first. That's it. He has struck out seven men, and he's thrown just 68 pitches through five. And he has the luxury of starting the sixth inning with his opposing pitcher, Steven Strasburg, then Defoe, then Turner. Popped up on the first pitch. That'll help. Dansby right behind the second base bag is there, and it's 15 in a row for Fultonevich. <laughs> Ozzy's going to draw a line. <laughs> Here's Defoe. He popped out to Johan Camargo. That's two, the last two outs for Fulte on two pitches. Especially when you get the pitcher just to put the ball in play on the first pitch. Yeah. So all the things that we were hoping Mike would be able to do to this point he's on pace to do them the sliders been great you figure he's got a great chance to go seven innings or more. The only thing he can't control is offensive support and he has been one of the poorest supported pitchers in the National League this year as this one's rocketed toward right center and Ender will track it down hard hit ball first in a while for the Nationals. But Defoe's the second out. Mike has given up three earned runs or less in 10 of his 11 starts this year yet is only four and three on the season. There are only two other pitchers who have given up three or fewer runs in more starts this year. They are Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer who've done that 11 times. Verlander and Scherzer's records far greater than Mike's four and three because of that run support I spoke of. I'll tell you and what stinks is when you're in that locker room trust me the media is reminding you hitters every day of how many runs you're giving them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's frustrating you almost sometimes almost try too hard. Here's Turner. He pops one up got jam. Swanson and Albies converge. It'll be Dansby in shallow center. He's got it. Very easy inning for Fulton Evich. Three outs on six pitches. Let's see if the Braves can break through. Still scoreless.
game. Scherzer versus Fulton Emich. And Atlanta's good work against the East is our SunTrust confidence feature. By far the best record in the division and a ton of games played. You see the Nationals, this is only their 20th game within the division, the fewest of anybody. All right, we've gone through the lineup twice now against Strasburg. He struck out seven men. Do you change your approach at the plate against Steven? Try to play a little small ball here with Ender and Ozzy coming up. Well, if Ender gets on, I wouldn't mind seeing a hit and run, seeing yeah. him get some action going, do Move something. Moving over anything, yeah. This is not unlike what Strasburg did against Atlanta on April 10th. He won a one to nothing game. Went eight innings of three hit shutout ball, walked two, struck out eight. Pop fly out of play. Yeah, the Nationals got two runs in the first inning against Mike Fultonevich on that day. Four to one was the final. I beg your pardon. I think, Joe, you said it right. Freddie's about the only one that's kind of been ready for that heater tonight. Everybody else is late on it, or it's almost like they're looking for that other pitch. No balls, two strikes for Ender, who's flied out twice. And he laid off the high heat. Well, one of the things he's doing, uh, both lefties and righties, but especially I notice it to left-handers, he's pitching high and away. He's really working the outside part of the plate, but up in the zone, too. And they're having trouble catching up to it. Setting up out there again. He did that to Preston Tucker right there. The same exact thing. He went high with the fastball for a ball, and then he came back with that changeup. And the one, he threw a good one to Tucker. The guy I'm swinging. That one obviously was too low. That thing was diving, though. Two balls, two strikes. Defoe to his right. Momentary bobble, but no trouble. And there's the first out. So we've talked a lot about how velocity can make life tough on a hitter. We've talked about how changing speeds can make life tough on a hitter. We haven't even talked about what you were just saying, guys, and that's changing a hitter's eye angle and how Strasburg and Fulton Evich are doing that tonight. In and out, up and down with different pitches, different velocities. They've got it all working, both of them. I think most guys, especially, well, they can live at the top of the zone because they throw so hard. Most guys who like to pitch at the top of the zone have good curveballs because they like to start the curveball at that same line and drop it on you. These guys don't throw many curveballs. That might have been the first one since the first inning that I remember from Strasburg. They're mostly fastball slider change. I mean, both these guys right now are in complete control mm -hmm. of what they're doing out there. Poke toward short. Turner got rid of it quickly. Two outs. And Strasburg has set down six in a row. Let's take a look at tonight's Sonova's Greatness Made Here feature. It's Braves first baseman Freddie Freeman. There are those numbers against Strasburg. 15 hits, four of them homers. 16 and five would look real good right here. If he hits one, this place would go cray cray because it would put Atlanta in front. Who taught you that word? Great, great. I think that Gosh. was probably what was Brian Jordan's the other night? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Man, what's going on here? <laughs> no balls in a strike. You know, I think one thing that's great about Freddie, Joe, and I used to always say this: you want to see the best hitters in the game, go look at their numbers against the best pitchers in the game. Mm -hmm. And Freddie stack up there right with anybody. Well, his fourth inning hit extends his hitting streak to 14 games. They give him the whole left side of the infield if he wants to poke one the other way. We need a bomb. Well, he's given up 10. Strasburg pitching great against Atlanta in Atlanta again. Freddie fouled that one back, a ball and two strikes. He's only given up two home runs in his last four starts, but they were in the same game. A loss against the Dodgers, 7-2. to two. 
He walked four that night, so he was obviously having a little trouble with his control. No walks for him tonight. Braves have four singles. And the pitch. Caught on and missed. Freeman couldn't get it. That's eight strikeouts for Strasburg. And our duel continues to the seventh, where Bryce Harper leads off for Washington. Nothing, nothing in game two. From SunTrust Park, presented by Kaiser Permanente. Well, it's getting serious now. We're into the seventh inning, no score. And Bryce Harper leads off for Washington. Harper has the lone Nationals hit. He turned around a 99 mile an hour fastball and laced it into right field for a one out single. After that base hit, Fulton Evich has retired 17 consecutive Nationals batters in this game. What I like is he's done it with ease, too. It's been a mix of pitches. Line to first and Freddie there. Fulty helped him with a leap off the mound. Did you see that? Uh, oh, yeah. I think he was hoping catch it. This was a pitch right here that I guarantee you Fulty will look back and be glad he got away with it. Let's change up right over the heart of the plate. And you can tell, look, Bryce, he knew right when he hit it. So Fulton Evich with a froggy hop. And Freeman the play. Just goes to show you that not every hit comes on a bad pitch and not every out comes on a good one. But Fulton Evich will take it. 18 in a row retired. And he delivers a strike to Rendon, who is 0 for 2. A strikeout and a ground out. And that was a big first out. This is a big inning right here facing the heart of their order. Seventh inning. It's like you said, at this point, you start to get the feeling, Chip, that one run is going to, might do it. Yeah, who blinks first? Yeah. No balls, two strikes. Fulton Evich, 78 pitches. And 79 called strike three. There's that vicious slider. What a great pitch. Just painted on the outside corner right here. You can see. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. And Tom Hallion loves it. Boy, he has had the best seat in the house tonight for these two starting pitchers, hasn't he? Oh, this is an umpire's dream right here. Like I said, he's throwing two really good sliders to get him out both times. So Harper lines out to first. Rendon strikes out looking. Matt Adams 0 for 2. And ahead in the count. One ball, no strikes. 
And a ground ball to second. It'll be another easy inning for Fulte. He's followed both of Joe's Ford keys to perfection. The slider and seven again. Can Atlanta give him a run after the stretch? We're scoreless. Let's find out. A lot of strikeouts, no walks. I mean, it's been a treat. We haven't seen a game like this in I don't know how long. No. This is really fun to watch. Both guys are on top of their game and dealing. Who makes the first mistake? Who blinks first? It's, well, like, it's like a game from my childhood right here at Turner Field. Two yeah. hours and 12 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Have a safe ride home. Well, and here we go. This is the part of the game where the Braves have been so destructive. They've scored 102 runs from the seventh inning on. They need one to grab a lead tonight. Marcakis leads off. Strasburg has set down seven consecutive men. I can't remember a big league game where both starters are pitching into the seventh and no walks. None. And a total of 16 strikeouts. Well, Fulty's thrown 13 pitches in the last two innings combined. Mm-hmm. He's done that to one hitter at times where they've fouled off pitches and battled him. Nothing in one for Marcakis, who hit into a double play last time up. Two good breaking balls to start him. They just both keep feeding off each other. It's like a heavyweight fight. The one thing I love about Fulty that I'm hoping that as he continues to do this, have a game like this that he expects expects that from himself right. you know hey I want to go seven innings and not be happy when you go five taken downstairs well I was at the Nationals Cubs game when Strasburg pitched like this Mike Fulton is pitching like Strasburg did in the playoffs last year complete utter command and a big step forward perhaps for both men one in October, one here in June. And a shot to right. Another two-strike hit for Marcakis. So Atlanta has the leadoff man on. It's the second time that's happened. And Kurt Suzuki's the hitter. He has one of Atlanta's five hits. Okay, here's a mistake. Maybe the Braves can parlay that into a run or more. Watch Severino here. He wants a fastball. Remember, all these off-speed pitches, but he wants it up. He wants a high fastball. He didn't get it there, and Nick nailed it. Bell tie, base hit. And I think it goes to show you, when you talk about Nick being an older guy, know how to hit, he, he wasn't going to let that fastball get by him. He might have got beat with an off-speed pitch, but he wasn't going to get beat with 97. That's a great point. Now, will they throw 97 to Suzuki? Kurt can hit anybody's fastball. And he likes to ambush early in the count. Let's see what he does. He's one for two. Foul away. You can see Kurt trying to shoot that hole with that swing right uh -huh. there. I think he knows 
I got to do everything I can right here to advance Nick. As you said earlier, though, Jeff, his asset, his best asset is hooking that ball in the corner. Yeah. He is, it's not that he can hit the ball to right field or doesn't, it's just that's not what he's best at. They're trying to pitch him away. Almost messed up there. Ninety seven mile an hour fastball straight back. And now Suzuki has to. Work from behind in the count 0 and 2. Good take. Strasburg's pitch high this year was two starts ago 115 pitches in that game against the Dodgers where he gave up the two homers and four walks. Well he's 30 away from that he's only thrown 85 tonight. One two. Ooh. Another good take even count. I would guess. I, because I don't know that I ever saw anybody throw a 90 mile an hour changeup, but I would guess that is extremely hard to recognize when when it's that hard that it's not going to be 97. I told you the one I hit, I didn't recognize it. I just swung and it hit my bat. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be in the right place at the right time. The stretch now, the 2 2 in the dirt. What a stop. So after Strasburg got ahead with two fastballs, he's thrown three straight off speed pitches that have missed. That one, the worst of the three. Boy, is this a good play. That's a great play. I'd like to see Snip put him in motion right here. I would too. Take a chance and let Kurt know so that he's, if the very least, he can protect Absolutely. Nick. He's got a decent lead at first. He is going. The pitch hammered into left field, a base hit. Mark is on his way to third. The ball softly hit and perfectly placed. And Atlanta has him at the corners with nobody out. Look at old Nick. He went off speed Kurt. on him. Went off speed on him too. Front, do front door curveball. The pitcher, we have not seen him throw much tonight. You talked about. Hanger too. Didn't yeah. have much on it. Kurt had very little movement in that front side. He was gearing up for the heater. So even though it was something off speed, he didn't commit his hands. He had already put that, put that front foot down. I'll say this. I think that's Steven's first mistake of the night right there. I know we talked about the ball he threw to Nick, but pitch pitch selection. Uh -huh. I think he's got at least two pitches that are better than that pitch he just threw. Johan Camargo's our Georgia lottery feature. High on base percentage. He's looking for a fly ball at the least here. Didn't get it. Strike one. This is an opportunity you cannot let slip away. You've got to find a way to get Marquecas in here in a scoreless game in the seventh. First and third, nobody out. Little Roller's going to get the job done. Adams boots it. And everybody's safe. Even if he comes up cleanly, I don't think they get Marcakis at the plate. And Atlanta has broken through against Strasburg. Well, he was coming home because that was going to be his only play. But he looked up too soon, and then that truly was a boot. He almost kicked it to him. <laughs> but he was looking home before he got the ball in his glove. It would have took a perfect throw right there to get Nick at the play. That was a great read by Nick. Slow ball. You're not really going on contact yet because there's no outs, but it's one of those you see it on the ground, you're gone. Nick Marquez just scored the 1,000th run of his major league career. Is that right? And that is a big one. Atlanta leads in the seventh and still nobody out for Preston Tucker. As you saw there, E3. Marquez with a two strike hit 
Suzuki with a 3-2 count. Hit a soft line drive over Rendon's head, and then the error off Camargo's bat brings home Marquecas. 1-0 Atlanta. And now Tucker digs in. And takes inside, ball one. 8-3, but don't you, you still get an RBI for that, right? I would think he should. I think you can't, you can't assume he's going to make that play at home, right? Especially if the runner's going right away. Yes, good call. So, yes, an RBI for Camargo. The pitch needs a corner. I'd like to see Preston just look for a location here. Don't try to cover the whole plate. Even one and one here, look for something. If he wants to look for a change up, this would be a perfect time to do it. Love it. Hook it right down that right field corner. Yeah. One one pitch. There it was. But perfectly located. He's just putting it right at yeah. the back point of home plate. Guys are swinging over the top of it. It's just remarkable how he's using it. Isn't it the cruel cool nature of being a pitcher, though, Joe? You deal as well as Strasburg is. You're in a nothing nothing game. You make two mistakes and they cost you a run. Well, who blinks first? So far, it's been the Nationals. Braves with a chance to add on. The one two is fouled away. Another changeup. He's pounding Preston with those changeups. You almost get the feeling is he going to try to sneak one by him well, right here? Down there, down there, down there. Now elevate. Suzuki at second, Camargo at first. Like Severino is asking for him to throw it upstairs again. Pitch. Way too high. This is where we talk about it. I wouldn't mind him right here taking a chance and sitting on a changeup right here, 2 2. Sammy Solis, the left hander up in the Nationals bullpen. And Strasburg pushing toward 100 pitches. And now he's gone three and two to Tucker. So all of a sudden, the Strasburg magic starting to vanish here for Davey Martinez. Hey, he's crowd enjoying this one. He started the runners earlier in the inning. Tried again. Not going. And strike three on the breaking ball. So nine strikeouts for Strasburg. That takes care of Tucker. And now Dansby Swanson, the batter. And this part of the order is where Strasburg's gone to get strikeouts. Tucker twice, Swanson twice, Fulton Evich twice. That's another curveball right there, 3 2. So this trio has accounted for six of his nine whiffs in the game. Well, we need Dansby to get a knock right here because this is going to be your guy to drive him in. Yeah, Fulton Evich is out in the on deck circle. Yeah, he's not coming out of this game. No. So the key man is Dansby Swanson, 0 for 2. A strikeout looking, a strikeout swinging. And he flinched on that breaking ball, a strike. Braves have been a late game team all year seventh inning or later first in all those categories including runs scored and all this started with a leadoff hit by Marcakis on a two strike count the 0 1 pitch then Suzuki down two quick strikes battle back to get it to three and two Ryan Schnitker rolled the dice sent the runner and Kurtz served a soft single to left and Camargo put the ball in play. Matt Adams charged it first, couldn't come up with it cleanly, and error brought home Marcakis. And for the Tucker strike out, Swanson now with a 1 1 pitch coming. And off the end of the bat, fouled away. Great crowd tonight for Friday Night Fireworks 33,845. He announced attendance for the Braves. 
you haven't made your plans to join us tomorrow afternoon, we hope you'll consider it a 4-10 start. Brandon McCarthy and Gio Gonzalez, the scheduled pitchers. Boy, will those two guys have some pressure on them. How do you top this <laughs> one? And fouled away. Oh, nice job of fending that off by Swanson there. You, know, you, you hate to play this this way because Strasburg can blow you up so easily inside. But behind in the count, you'd, I'd love to see Dansby get his bat broken and flare one to right field just because he's got the outer half covered. Well, and you give yourself a chance. I remember they used to say, you get out in front of it, you're probably out. Strong enough to jam one and hit a blooper in there. Going away, too. Oh, fought it off. That was, that was too good a pitch. I mean, it was still at 96, but that had a lot of the plate. You got to wonder, he's getting up to 102. He's thrown quite a bit. He's worked hard this inning. One ball, two strikes. can see that's just a hanger right on the inside part. He knew it. Look at that. And Strasburg knew it. You see, he didn't even turn around to look at it. And it's still amazing to me, Joe, that you get beat with that pitch. Right. I do not understand that. The Braves have scored four in the seventh. And Mike fulton now with what looks like an enormous 4 nothing lead. Who blinked first? It wasn't Mike fulton tonight. I think this is going to be his last batter right here. I would bet you he's going to bring Solace in for NCRTA. fulton has got some funky swings going on tonight. <laughs> he's getting out there a little quick. Yeah, I'd rather have him just sit here and take this one and get back to the dugout yeah, and get wait yourself a minute. You, ready. You yeah. said it lasted bad. He needs to start swinging now. He followed he your did, advice. He did. He must have listened. No balls, two strikes for fulton -Evich. And that is the inning. And what an inning it was. Excuse me, two outs. That's the inning for. Well, it's been a great two out inning. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. I want to get him out of the mounted pitch. Sorry. That sounded My like, bad. That sounded like the radio call of the NBA <laughs> game last night. <laughs> yep, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Dansby's fired Dansby up. Dansby and his twin, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, Chip just pulled a J.R. Smith right there. Yeah, not the first one. <laughs> Won't be the last either. As Ender hits, he's 0-3. You know, we talked yesterday in the pregame <laughs> about if this was going to be a statement series or if the guys knew it. I think the big thing for us is hold on to this game and show these guys we ain't going anywhere. Yep. You know, we're going to be here all summer playing good baseball. Well, we talked about that before the game, as you said. Uh oh what's going on with Strasburg? Well, it'll always be something. <laughs> That's his glove hand. And it looks like there might be some cramping going on with Strasburg's wrist, forearm, or hand. That is not his pitching arm, but it's his glove arm. But yesterday we were talking about how no one will admit how much they want to win this series and trying to put as little emphasis on it as they can. But make no mistake about it, especially the Atlanta Braves wanted to win this series. When you get tonight, all of a sudden you tell yourselves, you know what? 
Arguably, if we went against their best two pitchers, we were going to see this series and mm -hmm. beat them both. And taking nothing away from anything Atlanta's doing, they're going to get healthy. They're going to get the team back at some point. Add as many losses as you can to the Nationals, and Strasburg is not going to continue. Some sort of an issue with his glove hand will knock Strasburg out of the game. Not before Dansby Swanson knocked a three run homer over the left field wall to make it four nothing Atlanta. He delivers the fastest internet with the best in-home Wi-Fi experience by Delta and by Synovus, the bank of here. With Joe Simpson, with Jeff Rancourt, J.R. Smith with you from Atlanta. <laughs> it's 4 nothing Braves thanks to a Dansby Swanson homer and a run scored on Matt Adams' error at first and the perplexing case of Steven Strasburg continues as he and Dave Martinez talking over number one the questionable pitch to Dansby that he ripped and the glove hand issue that forced him from the game. This is Sammy Solis he's been used a lot this is his 30th game low to mid 90s fastball curveball change up inherits an 0 1 count. And Ender bounces the first one up the middle, and Defoe can't handle that. So Enciarte's aboard. He gets an infield hit. Hey, guys, uh, let me preface what I'm about to say with by saying that Steven Strasburg, we've seen him really good, like the game he pitched back in April. We know his last five games, he has a 134 ERA and all those great numbers. But how many times have we seen it? Not just the Nationals. How many times have the Braves seen this guy all of a sudden have something that isn't right when things aren't going right? Quite a bit. I think he's got some hurt feelings right now. Well, I remember at Turner Field, we had the heat and humidity problem where he left and he was cramping in that game and had to get two IVs after the game. We've heard him say of Turner Field, he just never felt comfortable on that mound. He felt that the mound was off center from home plate. Now tonight, after the Braves touch him off for four runs, it's not his pitching hand, but something on his glove hand, which was bothering him, and he had to leave. That's the first home run he's allowed in Atlanta since August of 2014 to Tommy LaStella. Wow. No balls and a strike. Big lead by Ender. And Ozzy turning around right handed behind 0 2. I like Ender's approach there. New guy comes in 0 1. I'm not letting him, I'm not going 0 2. Get that first fastball and go on it. Well, it is said that fortune favors the bold. Brian Snitker 
Put Marcakis in motion with Suzuki up there. Braves got runners at first and third. Camargo put the ball in play. And after a strikeout, Dansby Swanson got a breaking ball, and he did not miss it. And the Braves have a four-run seventh and are still hitting. Another big deal about this to me is the bottom of the order is what did the damage, too. Well, that's what we talk about. You, you, your lineup getting deep and can score from anything. It's the first time we've had that in a long time where you feel good when the bottom of the lineup's coming up. Yeah. No balls, two strikes for Albies, and he pops one up left side. Rendon and Turner. Turner in foul ground near the tarp. Leans over, and he makes a fine stretched out catch, and that retires the side. Atlanta has been awesome in the seventh and beyond. They were awesome against Strasburg tonight. Marcakis and Suzuki single. An error brings home Marcakis, and then Dansby, a one out, three run homer. The exclamation point on a four run Atlanta seven. Now back to J.R. Smith. <laughs> uh, Juan Soto leads off the eighth. All right, Mike had a nice long rest on the Atlanta bench in the seventh as Peter Borges is in, in left. Let's hope he can get back into a rhythm quickly. He's retired 20 straight. I, I would uh, have somebody getting loose in the bullpen. That was a long sit. And he's missed three in a row to Soto. I don't know if Mike's even had a three ball count. If he has. I think he did early in the game to uh, Harper. Harper, 3-2 yeah, when he threw in the it. heater. And I think that's the only one. Yeah. And there's a strike. Soto was ready to flip the bat away. Listen, after seven innings and rolling like that, and you sit all of a sudden for 25 minutes, it's tough to get that arm going again. Uh -huh. And a leadoff walk. So Mike will have to go to the stretch for the first time since the first inning. And Chuck Hernandez paying close attention to Fulton Evich with Goodwin coming up. And Chuck will make his way to the mound here. Buy some time for somebody to start throwing. Yep, somebody's playing catch out there. As Goodwin's coming up, he's just back from the disabled list. Tonight, four nothing. Atlanta has the lead. Nationals have their leadoff man on to start the top of the eighth. Visit Synovus for your banking, lending, and investing needs. Synovus, the bank of here. So the walk about the only blemish for Fulton Evich tonight. The Nationals have had just two base runners. Winkler was in there last night. Pitch great. 
This is Mike's longest start since his no hit bid June 30th last year in Oakland. And he missed with that one. One ball, no strikes. So five out of six out of the zone to start the eighth inning from Fulton Evich. Mike doesn't want to do is start walking people and turn the lineup over to Turner and Harper and company. They're a ways away, but a couple of walks could change that pretty quickly. Two balls and a strike. I'll tell you, if you're Dave Martinez, you can't be real happy with that swing right there, 2 0. No. Got a guy throwing five. You can see him. Look at him. He's, I think he's probably saying it right now. Five out of six balls. Double play ball. There's one. There's not in time. What a stretch by Freeman. That was close. But Atlanta gets the lead runner. Beat it. Ozzie, when Ozzie goes to his left and plants to throw back, he's got to get his arm in a position. And he has it right up by his ear. He doesn't usually glove it and throw from a low position. He's got to get his arm up. Oh, I got him. And it just picked off Goodwin. <laughs> wow. I bet Dave Martinez will love that. Can I make a prediction? You want you want Mike going out on a limb? Yeah. He's not going to play tomorrow at 410. Down 4 nothing. He gets picked off <laughs> and still hasn't touched first base. You swing 2-0 on a ball nowhere near it, and then you get picked off. Where was he going? Was I, he not paying attention? I don't think he was paying attention. I really don't. Well, to quote a Major League broadcaster in the facility tonight, where was he going? <laughs> what was he doing? And Atlanta happy. The good one's the second out, and there's the third one. Fulton Evich just struck out Severino. He's through eight with a shutout bid. A walk, a ground out, a pickoff, and a strikeout. And Fulton Evich is rolling. Hats off for heroes, because no matter where you serve or when you served, we stand ready to serve all military families. Well, Goodwin is taken out of the ball game after that ill-advised swing on a 2-0 and the pickoff play. Michael Taylor now takes over in center field for Washington. He will hit eighth. 
And Tim Collins is on for the sixth time as a national. He pitched briefly last night in the seventh inning and issued a four pitch walk to Nick Markakis and then was taken down. I know that it'll be explained as a double switch. And that will help protect Goodwin, but I think all of us know that that was going to happen. Shift that base hit by <laughs> Freddie Freeman. First pitch greets Tim Collins and Atlanta looking to add on in the eighth inning. Joe Castiglione, the longtime radio broadcaster for the Red Sox, calls this shift set up the shotgun formation with the quarterback back yeah. behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And Freddie just dropped this one right over the top of the shotgun. So the Braves leading in all the columns tonight. They've out hit Washington 9 1. The Nationals have committed the game's only error. And the Braves lead four zip in the run column. That's a strike to Marcakis 0 and 1. What a turnaround on that inning for Fulton Evich. And I like it. I think it gives him some confidence again. I think he knows, hey, I'm finishing this ball game. You bet. Nothing in one from Collins, who spins one up there, and it missed badly. It's an even count. Mike's sitting on 93 pitches. He's got a lot left. There were times he had 93 pitches after four innings. Ground ball to short. Defoe with the turn. And it's double play. Second one of those by Marquecas tonight. And Kurt Suzuki's coming up. He's got a two hit game. Dave Martinez is on his way out. He's going to take the ball from Tim Collins, who gave up the hit and the double play ball off the bat of Nick Markakis. Washington goes ever deeper into their pen, trailing four zip. From SunTrust Park, presented by Kaiser Permanente. Well, this has been fun tonight in Atlanta. 33,000 plus saw a scoreless game entering the home seventh inning. Strasburg and Fulton Evich, the starters. The Braves got four runs in the home seventh. A big blow, the Dansby Swanson three run homer that chased Steven Strasburg. Another national. Player back from injury. It's Ryan Madsen who gets a tune up here in the eighth. Just off the disabled list, and this guy's kind of like Johnny Venters. You got to admire the fact that he missed three full seasons 2012, 13, and 14 before getting healthy and being able to come back. Tell you what, back in 08, 09 with the Phillies, he was some kind of good setting up Brad Ledge. Tough. And he almost plunked Kurt Suzuki with the first pitch.
One ball, no strike. Suzuki with a two hit game. And back out of play. In the Nationals' ninth, Taylor, Defoe, and Turner are coming up. Boltonevich at one point retired 20 consecutive hitters. Old foul. And after Mike got that 20th out in a row, that made it 41 of 45 Nationals hitters retired, dating back to Sean Newcomb's masterful performance in game one. That is remarkable. So it's 43 of 48. Nationals hitters set down by the Atlanta staff. How many times the Nats are going to go up to bat for 17 innings and only score two runs? On six hits. Yeah, not too often. Especially the way they were playing. Yeah, they came to town with a 10 game road winning streak, a six game winning streak overall. The only caveat to that, talking to the Nationals people, Joe, was that, well, they. they Beat up on some weaker teams. Right. And we talked about it. I said the one thing I'll give our team credit for, we've had to have one of the top two or three toughest schedules in baseball. No doubt. That's upstairs. Braves have played, counting tonight's game. 43 games against winning or at 500 teams this year. And the Braves, if this score holds, will go to 27 and 16 against those clubs. Did you say 43? 43. So 43 of 57. 2-2 two -two is hooked foul. And that's how you measure yourself. Let me see what we're doing against the good teams. And to have that kind of record, it's amazing to me that we've played all but 14 games against a team that's had a losing record. Mm -hmm. Madsen ready with his 2-2 pitch. You ever watch Wash when Kurt comes up? I always feel like he's on the edge of his toes over there. Well, he'd like to be over there in that behind that Washington. <laughs> I was going to say, he goes back screen. any farther, he's going to be sitting in Washington's bench. Uh-huh. The 3 2 pitch into the Nationals dugout. Good bit of managing here by Dave Martinez in a game that at this point looks to be, if not completely out of reach, a real long shot. He's getting Madsen into the game in a low leverage, low pressure situation just to get him acclimated and pitching again. And Kurtz made him work. He's going to see a ninth pitch. And here it is. And he took it for ball four low. So a parade of base runners for Atlanta here in the seventh and the eighth inning. Seven Braves have gotten on base since the start of the seventh. And here's Camargo. He brought home the first run with a little topspin roller to Matt Adams at first, who couldn't glove it cleanly. And when the ball Popped out of his glove and through the wickets of Strasburg. Marqueca scored to make it 1 0. And a broken bat roller to second will send us to the ninth. Mike Fultonevich, the stage is yours. Eight shutout innings of one hit ball. It's 4 0 Atlanta.
Mike fulton night, fellas, and a chance for him to make some personal history as he tries to finish this one off and shut out the Nationals in game two. He only had one complete game in the minor leagues. That was at Gwinnett. First guy to go eight innings this year. The last complete game for the Braves, Julio Tehran against the Mets in June of 16. Wow. Two years ago. Yeah. God, I was playing. <laughs> well, Mike has never gotten an out in the ninth inning in the major leagues. Never. This would be a great time for him to take care of that. Ground ball toward third and foul. And Michael Taylor batting for the first time is quickly behind 0 and 2. You can see him out there. He's like a horse seeing the finish line right you now. Bet. Had that walk after sitting a while last inning and then got the, the big out and the pickoff, and you could tell he got right back to work. There's the first out in the ninth. And Fulton Evich has 10 strikeouts, the fifth double digit strikeout game of his career. Still, still had a little riding action on it. He's got plenty in the tank right now. And guys, we're talking about a 10 strikeout game. A one hit one walk game and he's thrown 97 pitches. How refreshing is this. To see from Mike. Well, obviously in five days he's going to have to turn the page do it again. But what I hope Mike does is looks at the film of this game. And OK how do I get obviously you're not going to go CG all the time but how do I get to seven innings. What did I do to limit my pitches and I think you're seeing he's just. And now he's in out of way. Great fastball, great location, and he's had a, an explosive slider. And I think you know what he's doing great, Joe, is when he gets to 0-2, yeah, he might throw one ball, but he's not fighting back to 3-2. If he strikes him out, he strikes him out. If not, puts it in play. Well, you remember earlier tonight, I said a major league manager said that Mike fulton reminds him of a young Max Scherzer. I can't imagine Max Scherzer pitching any better than Mike fulton did in this game through eight and two thirds tonight. That was pitch number 100. And he's working fast too. I told you he knows the finish line. Chip 20 at bats in less than four pitches. To back up what Jeff was saying. To the left side and through on an 0-2 count. Turner went out and got it. And Bryce Harper will stand in the way. He'll hit with a man aboard and two outs. So Turner extends his hitting streak on an 0-2 pitch to 13 games here in the ninth inning. So let's talk about Bryce Harper tonight. Before Turner's hit, he's the only national to hit safely. He turned around a 99 mile an hour fastball in the first. Fulton Evich erased him with a wicked hard slider under his hands in the fourth. And then Mike got away with one that Harper lined to Freddie Freeman, who leaped and caught, leading off the seventh. And he was swinging for the downs, didn't get it. Turner moves up on the pitch. Generally speaking, you give up one hit in the first and one in the ninth, and that's all. You're probably having a good night. Good things are going to happen. Yeah. No balls and a strike for Harper. Overpowered him at 97. Harper tried to hit that to the Comcast building and came up empty. And listen to SunTrust. Ninety nine on pitch one oh five about it. Cut it loose. That's amazing. So he'll try again a ball and two strikes. And here it is. He got him. What a way to finish it. A complete game two hit shutout for Mike Fulton image.
His first career complete game puts the Braves a game and a half in front of Washington. As the Braves cash in four runs in the seventh inning to knock out Steven Strasburg. What a game in game two in Atlanta tonight. We talk about relievers and how hard they throw late in the game. This guy was throwing 99 in the ninth. I mean, he went up to Boston last week, did what he did. He came here today. He's got to be just beaming with confidence right now. And you hopefully, you hope it just continues to trickle down to the rest of the staff. What a night. So the Braves begin the month of June with a victory, a 4 nothing shutout of their arch rivals from Washington. Mike fulton the distance for the first time as a major leaguer. Dansby with a three-run homer as well. Atlanta's won the first two games of the series. McCarthy and Gio Gonzalez tomorrow afternoon. For Joe, for Jeff, and our crew, Chip Carey, Braves Live, presented by Xfinity, is coming right up.